Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 2 vs 2 ranked game on Hill 112 and in this one I'm going to be using the 101st Airborne Division. I'm also playing with Val who's going to be using the 3rd Canadian Infantry. And we're playing against uh, Rochel or Rochelle and Raptor Joe who are using the 116th Panzer and 21st Panzer respectively. So this was a ranked game, 2 versus 2 ranked, and I was kind of worried going into this because the 101st Airborne doesn't work very well on this map at all. The main reason for that being is it's a very open map and it's very wide as well. So it's very hard to cover the entire map uh, with your units. I guess the only thing that you really have going for you is that you got the M3 guns, the 40.8 AT guns with 8 AP power. Those can be spread around quite nicely to really help you out. So I'm going to be taking the right side of the hill and I'm going to be focusing mainly on the center but sort of, sort of supporting the right. And then Val's also going to be pushing the center with me and supporting the left. So we weren't going to play out wide mainly because our divisions don't really allow for it. However, on the top, this is really where we can take full advantage of the units like we have. So for example, my airborne engineers will be able to fight in these uh, forests on top of the hill. Um, and just be able to sort of sit in this sort of hit bush here, for example, and flame into the, the trees as like infantry come up. So either way, let's uh, just jump this to my perspective because I think it just sort of tells the story of the game a lot better. It's interesting sort of combination we had uh, with this, the 101st uh, Airborne and 3rd Canadian. 3rd Canadian is quite nice because they have the heavier armor support in phase A that really complements the 101st. So you'll see that Val's going to be sending a Ram 2 to the center of the map to support me in my initial push onto the hill. Meanwhile on the right side I've literally just got AT guns. I've got an AT gun for sort of this sort of tree line to cover the right side. I've got an AT gun up here. Uh, probably just to cover the right side as well and also just to cover this little section here and then I've got a group yes, of units uh, heading up to here and also just up onto the hill and the majority of my troops were going up onto the hill at the start and then uh, Val's just going to be covering the left as quickly as possible so at the beginning I think it was just important for us to spread across and make sure that we're not going to get uh, pushed in any particular place and then we could like decide where we wanted to sort of concentrate our forces ideally we wanted to go to the middle of the map that was what myself and Val were discussing at the start of the game that we should probably push the middle because that's where we have the biggest advantage but if the opponent started pushing elsewhere then we'd want to know about it and uh, therefore covering off all avenues of attack is definitely a good idea so let's just speed things up and let the uh, deployment go and I'll talk about my uh, troop placement so if I select my troops and I click shift you guys can see that I've got an AT gun going to this tree line here supported by a pathfinder unit to sit in one of these trees and provide recon Then I've got a pathfinder unit and a recon heading up here so the pathfinder is literally covering the approach to the AT gun from infantry and then the AT guns just allowed there to sit out in the open then I've got uh, this jeep dropping off an AT gun into these trees so that that can fire down the street and then I've got a Pathfinder squad and an airborne rifle squad heading up to uh, these tree lines. All these lot are going up to the right side of the hill whilst uh, these bunch of troops are more heading to the center. I've got an airborne engineer squad to sit in this uh, forest and basically try and uh, take that entirely uh, before the uh, opponents get up here because if I can get like an airborne engineer into this side I can at least then um, challenge any infantry in that that forest so just dropping off my troops now Pathfinder's not really seeing too much I've got them into pretty decent positions here they have uh, pretty decent sight lines towards the opponent so we should see stuff coming if we uh, Ready, if we sir. need to but on the map on the top I was surprised so far not to see any opponents. Like normally at this point you'd have like loads of units coming straight up this road because this road's pretty straight on this side and they would hit you really hard. Easy, Currently we already run the plus one. Val's got a little bit of a push going on this side but mainly on the hill and just to the right of the hill we've gone over like halfway here 
and finally we see our first contact. So here comes the uh, half tracks up the road. Going to be trying to get my uh, units into position. The oh, airborne engineers and airborne and rifles on the right side here were planning to fight through this orchard, but didn't really need to, so just moving them as far forwards as I can. Airborne leader here to Christmas. basically um, cover these off. So the yeah the main idea on the right side where it's open just no AT guns with recon it's more than good enough especially these Pathfinder squads at close range can definitely yeah, demolish infantry. Then on the top it's a combination of the airborne rifles with the airborne engineers and airborne leaders with 50 caliber machine guns because these 50 caliber machine guns can pin down half tracks really nicely. Then Val's going to be supporting me with a, just a normal rifle squad nice and cheap and he's got his Ram 2 here uh, staying out of line of sight for now. So Focke Wolf 190 coming in with the four 5 HE power bombs is going to pin down my units but not do too much damage. And Val's going to be bringing out his own Spitfire Mark 9 to try and counter that. Here they go. For the head-ons. Oh, that uh, ME109 there. Coming in. The G0 onto Val's Spitfire and already they've invested in a lot of planes. So basically we need Val Spitfire to get out of there and since Val Spitfire is already falling back I just decided to take my Mustang off the field and this is the uh, the bomber Mustang um, a large air engagement there with a lot of points invested from both sides but we're going to be uh, losing out in that trade as the Spitfire goes down however um, this does kind of tell us that there's not too much on the ground because them having two planes out just like that yeah, pretty much can just tells us straight up there's no there's no there's nothing really here. And uh, at the moment these half tracks are moving up. And they're not really doing too much. They haven't brought any infantry with them. We're not having to engage them. This half track's doing a good job at pinning down the airborne rifles and trying to move up where I can just to try and take the top hill. But so far, um, not much luck. Over on the right side, the M3 guns trying to engage some half tracks that they're trying to push, which is great. Because it basically uh, gives us the presence there that we need. 50 cows on the top here are now engaging some Panzer Grenadiers, but in comes the mortar fire. I'm actually going to bring in my own mortars now, just because I need something to either smoke me as I run forwards or just something to make these guys fall back. So bringing up the uh, mortars now, I'm just going to keep the rest of my infantry in cover. Whilst I wait for those to arrive. I can't really do much pushing in uh, phase A, mainly because the 101st Airborne don't have any like super strong units to push with. Like if I had Stuarts, for example, it would be quite nice to try and push against these half tracks on the right side, for example. Although this half track, it does have like the AT weapon on it, but the main thing about spotting one of these is that it means that there's a Panzer Direct squad. And it means that the opponent has Panzerstreck squads in their division and in their battle group. So I have to watch out if I'm going to approach the right side for a Panzerstreck, but basically since I'm 100 player airborne, that's never going to happen. But say if I was playing another division entirely, which had tanks, then I would ha uh, be able to push forwards and know that there's a Panzerstreck there that I'd need to avoid. You can see the uh, 50 caliber machine gun here. That's engaging the half track down the hill. It is going to take some more to fire because of that. Val's got his Ram 2 actually on hold fire. And that's because there's a Panzer 3 here that's trying to crest the hill. And as it does, Val's going to open up. He's actually going to break the tracks of the Panzer 3. And now he's just got shots for days to kill that. And he kills it with the second shot. So that worked out really nicely. I'm also going to bring in the mortar to uh, provide some fire onto the opposing units in this tree line. Yeah, I'm pinning down the spear troop there. So our main objective at the moment is to push and take the top of the hill. And if we can do that, then we should be fine. At the moment, I was really sort of worried as to why they hadn't pushed us so hard. And they'd just come up with a Panzer III there and they lost it. They've now come up with another Panzer III. And it seems to me as though they invested in... A lot of these tanks, like the Panzer 3Ls here, obviously it's Windhund, so they're going to be lacking in infantry, and they are going to be provide, uh, relying on these tanks. 
but the ram the ram here the ram 2 is like the perfect counter to these panzer threes so a second one gonna go down there I've just bought a second plane got two Mustangs didn't know whether I wanted to go for this uh, Focke Wolf 190 or not because um, they do have another ME109 in the sky so I was coordinating with Val as to how we wanted to go about uh, taking down the enemy planes and Val's gone for the Tripolston in the center so that's going to force that Focke Wolf 190 to fall back for now now this uh, AT gun tried to move up and uh, did actually manage to pick off that uh, AT half track there. But now it's being run down by some Panzer Grenadiers and I'm moving across the Pathfinders to uh, assist in uh, cut, uh, basically blocking off those Panzer Grenadiers. Up here I've managed to move my airborne rifles forwards and get them into the trees there. But since the opponent has uh, recon there's nothing really much they can do to push up. So let's just go to the neutral perspective and see what they were doing. Uh, because at the moment, it's, to me, like while I was playing this game, I was really wondering what was going on. So if we look on this left side, there's a, a massive like overinvestment in uh, troops. You've got this uh, UE-630 pack. This is, uh, I don't know why they have this vehicle because it's not great at all. But either way, it's moving across on the left side. And all Val has here is it's a couple of HMGs. Vickers HMGs and a six pounder plus the links which brought in the recon. Whereas they've uh, invested in Spear Troop, Panzer Grenadiers with a half track, a Panzer Grenfuhrer, and a Spear Troop with an AT gun. And I guess it's it's a similar sort of distribution of points, but I mean, they're just not pushing with these. And Panzer Grenadiers are, uh, you know, they're quite expensive squads, honestly, especially when they come in with half tracks. Whereas, like, one Vickers HMG is covering this against three half tracks and the Panzer Grenadier. Like, if they just tr attempted to push this, yeah, okay, they're going to spot the six pounder, but then they can sort of work on mortaring that. If we look at their artillery, they had a lot of mortars throughout the game. So, there's a mortar here, they have a mortar here, they've got the uh, Wielfachwerfer. There's so much they could do to try and pin down this infantry and push. So, they're bringing up some. Panzer Grenadiers with these two star half tracks. This is the Wundhund player, and they're also bringing up some Flam Panzers to, to push us now. Over on the right side, I'm trying to slowly move forward my M3 guns to exploit this hole that I found. And over on the right, just trying to get rid of these Panzer Grenadiers. So if we jump to the to our perspective, we can see that they're finally deciding to push up onto the hill. And the M3 gun is here waiting to take out some half-tracks. We've also got Val hiding two of his rams waiting for some tanks to come up. And here they come, the Panzer 4C and the SBW223. So Ram's going to be, um, Val's going to be sending one of the rams to the right and one to the left. And what, this one to the left is going to take care of that half-track. My airborne engineers that were hiding in this uh, tree line couldn't quite get in range to use their napalm. So the Panzer Grenadiers, they're going to rip them to shreds. And I wanted to maybe try and let them fall back, but they would have got killed probably easier if I had done. Whereas there, at least they're pinned down in cover. So they're taking a while to kill and they're drawing the fire of the Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, Focke Wolf 190 comes in with the bombs onto the uh, mortar. We also see the JU-87 come in and take out our Ram 2. So a really big combined air force push at the moment from our opponents. Raptor Joe coming in with the JU-87 to pin down a lot of this infantry. So I'm coming in with my Mustangs now. I've saved up a lot enough Mustangs to go for this fight and I'm going to be engaging a couple of ME109 G0s. So yeah, our opponents invested in a lot of planes at the start of this game. It was pretty crazy and uh, they make the mistake here of actually evacing these ME109s. And I'm just going to go for the fighters before I go for the bombers because the bombers are easy to shoot down. Whereas the ME109s are really an issue, so if I can take out both the ME109 G0s, then I'm in a really good place, and that's exactly what I do. So I'm going to let the JU87s get out of there. The ME109s are the, are the ones I want to get the kills on, because then I actually have air dominance, and they can't use those bombers again without getting them shot down. So on the right side, um, my Pathfinders do unfortunately die. The airborne rifles were trying to pin down that squad, and I brought up a couple of extra infantry squads on the right to help out. Airborne leader is going to go down here as it was trying to support the airborne rifles. He's got killed by the Flam Panzer. Flam Panzers are coming up and doing a lot of damage to the airborne rifles, actually, and uh, the airborne engineers here. We're trying to do our best to uh, pick off 
these flam panzers. Uh, Bao's trying to move up his Ram 2 to take care of the Panzer 4. And if he can get rid of the Panzer 4, that would be great. But what's going to happen is the uh, S-307 pack's coming. And that's going to be a real issue. So P-51 Mustang. Going to be coming in onto the uh, ME-109 G-0. And we're going to shoot down another one. Also the Focke Wolf 190 there. We're going to be following onto that with a Mustang. But that one gets out. So another victory in the air. Mustang's really uh, paying off now. So my airborne rifles go for the bazooka shot onto the flam panzer, but it doesn't actually hit, which was really annoying. Flam panzer comes up onto my airborne engineers here and is going to start to pin those down. And the pathfinder's here in the open as well. I should have been um, falling these guys back, but I think I was concentrating on moving, yeah, just uh, adjusting my units on the right. Either way, um, Mustangs are still in the sky, going to be using them to strafe the flam panzers and pin those down. I'm, I'm allowing the airborne rifles to stay here, by the way, because they're unseen, and at least they can like get their bazooka on uh, target to kill off a unit or two. And just so you can see there, it paid off taking out the command unit, which is really helpful because we just took away loads of command stars from all of these units. The mortars coming in onto these Panzer Grenadiers, and thanks to the uh, Mustangs, we've managed to force the Flam Panzer back. Now uh, Val has brought up two of these uh, CMP Tripolstons, which are the uh, trucks with the Tripolstons on. And these were two-star veterans, the absolutely ripped to shreds infantry, so you can see the infantry squad dying very quickly there. And my airborne rifles and their airborne engineers both are dead. Uh, I should, probably should have fallen back the airborne engineers, but I was pretty safe with this airborne engineer in the forest area. So they've done a, a significant amount of damage to our divisions now. As they've come over the edge of the uh, hill here. And basically what was happening was I was worried that we weren't going to have like a very competitive game because it was quite quiet and we got a lot of ground early on. We're still running the plus one with 53%, but they really put a lot of effort into this push and they really um, bought a lot of planes to make it happen. The main issue with this is that they allowed us to get entrenched and now they're pushing against a defensive position which is really well held. If you look at our distribution of forces on the map, you can see that there is like a massive amount of troops of ours in the centre whilst we're sort of spread thin on the right side and on the left. And that's really where you want to be uh, probing. Yes, we have like absolutely tons of AT guns. I mean, I've got four AT guns alone just holding this right side. but. If you can find those with recon and then kill them and then move forwards with your units, that's really how you got to do this. So airborne engineers coming in here to help kill off those Panzer Grenadiers that pushed into our tree line. Just going to save uh, Val's Tripolston from being killed there and I'm going to retreat away from the half track. So Val's brought in his Sherman 3 now. He's lost both of his rams but what's going to happen here is the M1 gun's going to pop the uh, pack here. The three armor pack. A nice easy kill. We want to try and get rid of these Panzer fours, but they're going to be forced to retreat down the side of the hill so they don't get killed by the same AT gun. They brought up uh, some extra infantry. I'm just sort of waiting to see where I can put them, really. I should have had them unloaded and maybe walking on foot, but what's going to happen here is the Panzer fours is actually going to push up with attack move. The M1 gun's going to get shots on, and it's just missed two of its shots with one star veterancy. Should hit the third. Does hit the third, but bounces. So just going to be continuing that those shots until we get the kill and the Panzer 4 is going to go down. My opponent really should have fallen back sooner with those. He made the initial correct decision but bringing it back up was not the best idea. And there was a little bit of a mistake there as well. So this uh, half track actually ran out of ammunition and it nearly suicided up the hill into our forces. And that would have been uh, devastating. But here we can see an another build-up of pushes. Uh, we've got the Sturm Pioneers supported by more Flam Panzers. We're also going to be seeing the Wielfaktor for firing soon. So, yeah, just waiting for all that to happen. I'm reinforcing the right side with a 50 cal. Because throughout this game, what I really found was without the 50 cal support or MG support on the right side, I couldn't keep the Panzer Grenadiers at a distance like I wanted to. So I'm just bringing up a 50 cal to make that happen from now on. And um, I'm just spreading out the infantry up here. So I've actually brought up a bunch of engineers. So these aren't engineers with napalm, they're engineers with satchel charges. And basically if I can get them close enough to the edge of the hill without, without them being actually on the edge of the hill, then they can blow up infantry squads almost instantly, which is really nice. So just got to try and get them into cover and keep them in cover where I can. Right here, kind of made the mistake of showing the engineers and now... Um, 
Val's poor rifle leader is going to take mortifier because of me. Man Panzer is going to be coming up and uh, pinning down my engineers, but I'm going to fall them back almost immediately so they do not surrender. And we're still having an issue with like pushing up because we don't have like the major armor support that we need. Yes, uh, Val's have got Sherman 3, but there's no way that that Sherman 3 alone can push over the edge of this hill um, and take out these flam panzers. So the best bet we have really is to try and move forwards like AT guns and uh, try and kill things like that. Now here are Panzer Grenadier squads trying to probe. 50 caliber machine guns going to be moving over to the edge of the hill to try and help out. Airborne rifles and pathfinders are going to be coming in. I'm also bringing in a Mustang bomber just to get the uh, two 500 kilogram bombs on target just to pin down the Panzer guns there. They're going to be bringing in a uh, Focke Wolf 190 to counter my Mustang, but that was a, a massive mistake because uh, I've, I've already got um, air superiority really. Yes, they can buy some more Focke Wolf 190s, that's fine by me. Uh, Val's actually going to be coming in with his mosquitoes here, and look what happens. The Focke Wolf 190s turn to engage the P51 Mustangs, and the mosquitoes absolutely rip these Focke Wolf 190s to shreds. And that was incredible. Val using those bombers there to take down those Focke Wolf 190s. Admittedly, he probably could have used the bombs on the second Mosquito, but they're both then going to end up getting pinned down anyway by the opposing anti-air. But a really, really nice engagement taking out two more of their fighters. Those Mosquitoes are so potent if they can get onto their targets. And that's just going to allow my Thunderbolt here to engage the Flam Panzer and blow that up. And I've also got my Mustang here to hopefully engage the uh, Focke Wolf 190 G3. What's going to happen though? Uh, Mustang not really going to be able to engage the Focke Wolf 190 and both of my planes are going to be forced to fall back as well. Tripolster nearly shot down the Focke Wolf 190 but not quite. 50 Cal is going to be trying to pin down this half track. Half track is not quite in range to engage the 50 Cal. Probably should have moved into range because with three stars would have pinned down my uh, 50 Cal very quickly. It's instead firing at my airborne rifles who are firing at the uh, Panzergrenz. Now I've got an M20 command here as well now. That's got the 50 cal opening up onto the panzer fence. So the 50 cal actually manages to kill off the half track eventually, so that was good. And Mustang's now coming in to deal with the uh, JU-87s, but look what happens. Okay, so the JU-87s are coming in to bomb the 6-pounder, fair enough. As soon as they come into line of sight of these three star tripolsins, they absolutely get annihilated and they crash into our opposing lines. Really, really nice kills there from Val with these three-star CMP tripods. Absolutely incredible. Really, really good units. They're pushing up once again with more uh, Panzer Grenadiers, but I can't help to think that they they probably should have been using smoke. Honestly, I, mean, I know I make the mistake, and I'm, I'm probably a hypocrite for saying it, but like having some smoke here to allow all of these infantry to run forwards and spread out a bit would have been really nice. And they do have so many mortars. Like, if I show you guys, they've got this, all of these half-tracks. They should have been using those, that's for sure, to help out. But just these half-tracks, yes, they've run out of ammunition, but you've got 10 smoke rounds there. Why don't you use them? Uh, the other fact that is going to be trying to rock it where it can. But that's going to be moved. But, yeah, just use your smoke. I mean, I know I tend to actually use smoke when I've run out of other ammunition because I, that's when I remember. But over on this left side, Wolverine's going to take out Panzer IV. Really nice. So Val's done a great job there. But yeah, a lot of this infantry wouldn't have been hit so easily if there was smoke here. Also, they're just sort of butting heads into the centre of the map still. So as soon as they come over the horizon like across the crest of the hill there the M1 gun just destroyed another half track and that's just going to continuously happen also the air engagements going in so far in our favour is really helping us out and an ME109 making the mistake of flying over the hill again that's going to come down nearly crashed into some infantry there just seriously though these mosquitoes doing an amazing job I'm out. Over. The Wildfachwerfer, perfect use of uh, the unit there to uh, pin down all of this infantry because this we've got a large concentration of infantry here. This is uh, actually not the most ideal, but um, we were just concentrating in the middle because they were pushing us in the middle so hard. But what ended up happening was if we jump to the neutral perspective, the Wildfachwerfer actually got bombed like mid through the uh, like Wildfachwerfer strike. So it only managed to use like a certain amount of its rockets 
before getting pinned. And but ide ideally, what would have happened here was they would have used this infantry with smoke plus the Wielfachwerfer to push into this uh, forest here. That's what they could have done. Um, but they instead decided to just try and uh, run the Panzer Grenadiers across the open and try and just get them into these tree lines, which is fine, but just you need to have them covered by something, either a large amount of fire support, like IG-18s, or, I don't know, just like a large amount of tanks just coming up with your infantry, so you don't use smoke and you just use the extended range instead. But, oh, this off-map artillery, just absolutely annihilating them as they try and push back up into this tree line. Um, yeah, we moved into phase B and C, so I've got the off-map available, and um, there's not too much they can do now, if they keep pushing in the same location, that is, because it's so easy for me to predict where they're coming from. You know, you can you can see all of this, and... Yeah, it's, it's just... I don't know. Either way, uh, Mosquito's coming in to uh, bomb the Nibblewerfers. He's going to manage to get the shot off. I'm bringing in my Mustangs just to cover it off because our opponents were using a lot of, like, uh, planes. Uh, also, the Nebelwerfer is going to go down there to the, the Mosquito Bombing Strike. I also you tried to use the Thunderbolt to uh, get, get rid of one of the AA half-tracks. And what's going to happen here is my off-map artillery just decided to go for a drive uh, towards the enemy and uh, gets destroyed. So, that was really stupid of me. Uh, that actually had two strikes left. I'm, I'm, I'm scared to admit this, but basically that was probably one of the most stupid things I've ever done. Um, the off-map artillery there, I was trying to get it into range to use the Nebel, to kill these Nebelwerfers. But, the thing is, Val was hitting them with the Sextons anyway, so I didn't need to, like, go that close. But I was basically just trying to get it close enough to do the, uh, strike. And what I, what I ended up doing was fast-moving the artillery into the enemy lines just to get it, like, close enough quicker. Like, just with a quick order, and then I forgot about it. And it just drove itself into the enemy, which was silly. Either way, uh, more units going down. Not too much of a chance that our opponents are coming back from this one. Uh, we just killed their Panzer IV there, and um, you can see that even this this push, we can probably go for like an almost, like an a counter attack almost because we've got such a large concentration of units on this hill um, that have just been surviving because they've it's almost been not half assing the attack, but just not been doing it efficiently enough to do much damage to us. So. We're currently still running the plus two with a 58% uh, territory lead. On the right side, I've actually made a lot of ground, pushing forwards an engineer's squad aside um, a pathfinder, make, like exploiting this hole that I found earlier. And, like, I've been slowly moving infantry up here for a little while. And this is actually coming up behind a mortar half track, and I'm trying to get the engineer's satchel charge to uh, blow that up because it probably can. Uh, over on the left side, Val's also probing the line. Since they've invested so much in the center, it's become pretty obvious that there's not too much defending elsewhere. Opponent plane coming in to try and take on my Mustang, but our opponents decide to surrender. And that is GG after 25 minutes and 6 seconds. If we jump to the team perspective, we've got uh, 1,655 kills to 480 losses for Val. Really did a great job with his tanks. Uh, the Rams really being invaluable at the start of the game on top of the hill, along with the uh, like the Sherman 3 that he brought up later and the Wolverine. They were popping lots of units. Uh, alongside that, um, the AT guns were doing a, a good job. He had uh, the 17 pounders on the left side that brought in and uh, were doing a lot of damage. On the right side, my M3 guns were holding very well, but a lot lighter, and I think they should have definitely been, like, probed a lot more. So, move up, like, a spear troop squad, spot those inf spot those AT guns, spot, like, the lack of defense, and then just, like, RT that, and then and push through. Whereas, like, on top of that hill, it's really hard to get, like, in like recon up to see what's there. Um, without the recon being spotted itself because it's so close range. Whereas like on the sides of the hills, especially considering they're using the 116th Vintwund and the 21st Panzer, that's where they want to push because it's a lot open, a lot more open. There's a lot more like long range sight lines, which you really take advantage of with tanks and uh, like with the spear troop. So yeah, that's really what they needed to do. Instead, they kind of decided to go for this push all in into the middle of the map, which is fine, but... Again, you just need to make sure that it's done properly. So using the smoke to cover uh, your forces as they come up. I mean, personally, in this game, I should have used smoke myself to um, 
allow my initial push onto the hill to go a lot more smoother, especially after I brought in those uh, those mortars. But yeah, the opponents should have used it too in this case to allow that infantry to break through alongside the Wielfachwerfer, which would be pushing in and uh, destroying the units in the center forest. But either way, uh, yeah, that's about it. If we jump over to the kills perspective, we can see that my Mustangs did work on the ME109 G0s. That was the other thing. Complete overinvestment in planes. Obviously it caused us to overinvest in planes, but I'm an airborne deck, so it kind of makes sense for me. Whereas for a 116th Windhund and a 21st Panzer division, I'm not entirely convinced that, it, that buying that many planes was a great idea. I guess if you want to take control of the skies, then then fair enough. Like it's it's something that you might want to do against 101st, but it, in my eyes, it's almost inevitable that the 101st Airborne is going to come out on top, especially supported by a third Canadian with the uh, mosquitoes, because those mosquitoes are just so so damn good. Um, th but either way, yeah, M1 gun picking off the uh, pack and the Panzer IV in the middle also took out the Flam Panzer. So this M1 gun really did a lot of work especially taking out this pack for Val so he could use his uh, Shermans and stuff on the hills properly. And then we got the uh, 50 cals pinning down some troops here. Uh, Thunderbolt came in there, got a kill. This naval battery absolutely derping as it runs into the opponents. But if we look at what the majority of the stuff did did damage here, it was it actually came down to mainly like Mortifier and uh, just some Pans Grenadiers getting some kills here and there. Um, also like artillery, so we've got a uh, kill from the Nibblewerfer and the uh, Flampanzers. But yeah, like just trying to push into that middle was not the best idea yet. Yeah, defend it on your side of things. If you're going to like let me ha let us have the hill, then just defend it and push on the sides. That, that's, that's pretty much it. I, I'd say like as soon as one, as soon as that hill goes to one person or the other, just stop trying to push up it because the sight lines are too short. As soon as you come over the edge of the hill, you're going to get killed by an AT gun, by pin down by machine guns, all that kind of stuff. It's absolutely horrific. So unless you have some like decent artillery with the smoke support that I was talking about, there's no point in really trying it. Either way, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. It was interesting because the 116th really shouldn't win on this map, in my opinion, and it's quite hard. Um, and I was really worried about that throughout the game, but I just didn't get pressured in the right points. So I managed to get away with it. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.